Welcome to our lecture online. One of the techniques that helps us do line integrals is what we call parametric equations or utilizing parametric equations. Let's say we want to try to find the area of the circle right here. And the circle is defined as x squared plus y squared equals a squared. And notice if we pick any point on the circle, the distance from there to that, from the center to that point will of course be a because the radius is a for the entire circle. But the x value of that point will be equal to a times the cosine of theta, where theta is the angle here, and y will be equal to a times the sine of theta. So we're going to replace x and y by a cosine of theta and a sine of theta. But starting out, we're going to say that x, we're going to write x as the function of y, and of course if we do that, the function of y will be the square root of a squared minus y squared. Now we can find the area using line integrals by integrating along the complete line right there by saying that the integral along the complete curve times the function of y dy will give us the area and then if we then replace f of y the function of y by x we have the integral the line integral around the entire circle x times dy will give us the area of the circle. Now notice if we then replace x by the square root of a squared minus y squared we end up with kind of a difficult integral. So let's go ahead and do that. So we can say that is equal to the integral of the square root of a squared minus y squared times dy. Now that's doable, but you can see there's sometimes easier way to do things. We're going to replace this function by the equivalence in the coordinates of the angle theta. So let's go ahead and do that. So we can say that the area, which is defined as the integral, the line integral, all the way around the circle of x times dy can be written as the line integral around the entire circle. Instead of x, we're going to write a times the cosine of theta. And instead of dy, well, since y is equal to a sine theta, that means that dy is going to be equal to a times the cosine of theta d theta. So that's times a cosine theta d theta. And so this integral can be simplified a little bit. So now we're going to integrate this. We have a squared, because we have an a times the a, a squared, times the integral from 0 to 2 pi, because now we're going to integrate over, pi, uh, over theta all the way around the circle. And so that will give us cosine square of theta d theta. So now we have to replace the cosine squared theta by a good identity. So that would be a squared, so this is a squared, times one half times the integral of one plus two times, or one plus the cosine of two theta times d theta from zero to two pi. And that's a whole lot easier to integrate. When we do that, we get the following. This is equal to a squared divided by 2 times, when the grade 1 times d theta gives us theta, and the cosine of 2 theta, of course, we're going to need a 2d theta, so that would be 1 over 2, so plus 1 over 2. The cosine integrated becomes a sine, the sine of 2 theta, and then evaluate it from 0 to 2 pi. Okay. Now, we realize that when we plug in the upper and lower limit into the sine of 2 theta, the sine of two, 2 times 2 pi is 4 pi, that would be 0, and the sine of 0 is 0, so this simply does not add to the result. So all we have to do is plug in what we have over here, so this would become equal to a squared over 2 times, plug in the upper limit, we get 2 pi, plug in the lower limit, we get 0, so we multiply this times 2 pi, which is equal to pi a squared, which indeed is the area of a circle. So you can see by replacing something that looks like this, which is more difficult to integrate, we then replace x by the parametric equivalent in terms of the angle of the circle, then we can find a much easier integral to integrate and get the correct result. So that methodology will be used a lot using line integrals, and here's a nice example of how that's done.